start talking about your diabetes control and your nutrition and how this affects wound healing. If you have a foot wound, you're probably watching this, or if you're caring for someone with a foot wound. And many people that have diabetic foot wounds or foot wounds in general have diabetes. Some people don't. If you do have diabetes or if you don't, it's going to be very important to listen to this section. We're going to talk about diabetes and actually blood sugar control. And as well, we're going to talk about nutrition and how that can affect wound healing. Let's start and talk about diabetes and blood sugar control. I'm going to start out by telling you about a patient of mine. Now, in this course, you're going to learn about a lot of different patients that I've had to deal with. And I'm not going to use their names, but I'm going to let you know a little bit about how they came into my office. Every patient, just so you know, that comes in should be asked how their blood sugar is, how their hemoglobin A1C is, and how their weight is. Because all those can affect wound healing. The more your blood sugar is, the more your hemoglobin A1C, the higher it is, or the more your weight is, that can all affect and slow the wound healing process. This patient was about 250 pounds, was overweight, had a hemoglobin A1C of 10, and didn't know the blood sugar because they said it really didn't matter what their blood sugar was and they didn't like to test it. They said their doctor tested it. This patient had a foot wound that was open for many, many months and never seemed to get better. And initially when I saw this patient, I told them they needed to start taking their blood sugars, start controlling what they eat, and also to see a nutritionist. All of that is very important in terms of healing a foot wound. I want you to know that the wound itself is only part of the puzzle. It's not just what you put on the wound. It's not just the type of dressing or how you take away the, the dead skin around the edge. It's more important many times about how everything kind of works together to heal that foot wound. The first portion that I want to talk about is your blood sugar. If you have diabetes and you check your blood sugar, it should be checked every day. If you're unable to get the test strips, which is a common concern, if they're too expensive, if you don't have a machine, I would recommend you talking to your endocrinologist or your primary care doctor to get one. Because the higher your blood sugar is, the slower the wound healing is. The higher your blood sugar is, the slower the wound healing is. If you have an elevated blood sugar for a longer period of time, it's going to affect your hemoglobin A1C. That's a measure of your blood sugar over the last three months. So it's over a three month period. It tells approximately how your blood sugar is. Here's a little graph to see how your blood sugar relates to your hemoglobin A1C. As you can see, the higher the hemoglobin A1C goes above seven to eight to nine to 10, the higher your average daily blood sugar levels are. It's really the, the way to prevent cheating by doing a hemoglobin A1C, if it's nine or 10, and you say your blood sugars are always about 80 or 90, you're probably either checking them the wrong time or not telling the truth. It's very, very important to keep the blood sugar low, but how do you do that? And why do you need to do that? First of all, the, the problem is it's hard to keep your blood sugar under control. That's probably how you got here in the first place. That's how you got the diabetes. That's how the higher the blood sugar is over a period of time, it can advance. And the way your blood sugar advances and the way the disease advances is that the higher your blood sugar is over a period of time, it can affect your eyes, it can affect your kidneys, it can affect your nerves, it can affect your stomach, and it can affect your feet. It can affect many different aspects of your body by having an elevated or a high hemoglobin A1C or a high blood sugar. <clears throat> the complications with your blood sugar happen when the level is above seven. So seven is the magic number. First thing I'd like you to do is compare your number to the number seven. Are you above, below, or at the same level? If you are above the level, the rest of this is for you. If you're not at seven or if you're below seven, this is still very important for you 
to learn. High blood sugar goes hand in hand with slow healing because the higher the blood sugar can affect the blood vessels, it can affect the nerves, and it can affect the infection in your body. It can make you more prone to developing an infection. First, let's talk about what you can do to lower your blood sugar. The best thing for you to do is to get a team approach. You need a good endocrinologist and possibly even a nutritionist and maybe even a physical trainer. Let me explain why. The endocrinologist is the one that will put you on your different types of medications that are going to help control and stabilize your blood sugar and try to get you down to the, as much as close as you can to the number seven for your hemoglobin A1C. You may need to do this with a, a pump, an insulin pump. It may be with oral medicine or it may be with injections of insulin. That's not the scope of this. To learn more, I would recommend talking to your endocrinologist. But with that individual, they work in part with medications, but they also work in part with exercise and with nutrition. Very, very important. All three work together. Endocrinologist, nutrition, and exercise. Nutrition is the next part that's very, very important when healing foot wounds. When you have a foot wound, there is usually drainage out of the wound, and your body needs the nutrition in order to heal it. If you don't have enough nutrition, if you're not eating well enough, if you don't have the proper diet, including the vitamins and the minerals, your foot wound is going to be slow to heal. There is a level in your blood that's called the albumin level. It's actually the level of protein in your blood. If you have a smaller or a lower level of albumin, you may need to have a protein drink that can help you to get your protein level up. The more protein, the more you will be able to cross the gap and heal in the foot wound. It's not just this one aspect, but it's everything globally that works together. Also, if you're just eating, you need to make sure you have a diet high in protein. The problem with that is in today's society, most people eat high sugar and high starch content because it's usually less expensive. It's found at fast food restaurants and in stores. The types of foods that you want to eat, if you look at the supermarket, the easy way to think about it is buy the foods that are on the periphery in the supermarket. The foods that are in the periphery tend to be your fruits and vegetables and your salads and as well your meats. Those tend to be the ones that you want to eat and focus on with your diet. Try to avoid a lot of high sugar, a lot of chips and things like that that can affect your blood sugar, but as well, it's not giving you the proper nutrition. As well, talk to your doctor about having a multivitamin or maybe even some minerals because many times people have a slowed or delayed healing if they're not eating properly or if they don't have the proper minerals that are working. All of this works in conjunction to make an optimal wound environment. But why? When you have a wound on your foot, your body needs to work harder to heal it. There's drainage, so you're losing liquid through it. You're having to heal it and there's different types of chemicals that are needed and it actually just puts more of a tax or more of takes more energy out of your body. So you need to be eating properly. You need to be eating not just more, but you have to be eating more of the right food. That's why it's so important that you see a nutritionist if you're not sure if you're eating the proper way. A nutritionist can help you cook the proper way and do the proper planning for cooking. It's not the scope here to talk exactly about what to eat. Many of you know what to eat, you're just not eating that way. And it takes a, a change in your lifestyle. That's one way of controlling your blood sugar and as well making sure that you get the proper nutrients to help you heal your foot wound fast. Another aspect of getting your blood sugar under control besides the diet or eating properly is exercise. Exercise is important, but it's a lot of times very frustrating for people with foot wounds. Many people I see in my office actually start working out to try to lose weight to control their blood sugar and that causes the foot wound. 
it's very, very frustrating because what exactly they were trying to do to get their blood sugar down causes the foot wound. And then they can't work out because many times the foot wound is on their bottom of their foot and they can't wear, they can't walk, they can't do exercise and they get frustrated. I'll give you a couple of other options if you want to work out. If your foot wound isn't open, you can certainly go into the pool. Pool or aqua exercise can be very helpful, but be careful. Be careful you don't scrape your foot when you're walking around the pool because that sometimes can cause an actual foot wound. Also, you can do upper body types of exercises. And even if you do have a foot wound, if you work, use it properly, you can use an exercise bike. An exercise bike that's not putting pressure on the area of the wound can be effective. An exercise is something that's very, very important, but you may need to consult your doctor or even have a personal trainer or some other person like a physical therapist that can help you exercise properly so you're not putting increased pressure on your foot. The main tip in terms of exercising and changing the way you eat and making these lifestyle modifications is to be nice to yourself and go slow. Be nice to yourself because you're doing the best that you can. Be patient. It's sometimes better just to go walk over to the treadmill and just stand there for a minute every day. And then the first day, walk a minute for a first week, one, one minute. And then the next week, walk two minutes to get in the habit. It's more important to get in the habit of things, not how much you're doing, but it's being consistent. If you can consistently walk for five minutes a day and then build it up, it's much better than trying to do a half hour, an hour and causing a foot problem. Same with eating properly. If you could try to just change one thing and be consistent at doing that and develop new, new habits, it's much more effective than trying to change everything at once. It can be very, very discouraging and difficult because depression can come in and you may need to see a psychologist, someone that can help you with that because you're, you're, you're eating, your blood sugar is out of control, you can't exercise, you have a foot wound, and it gets to be very, very challenging. One way to work against that or help with that, with these feelings that you have, are support groups. In pretty much every community around the world, no matter where you're at, there are support groups. There's a support group for diabetes. There's probably a nutritional or eating support group or a nurse educator that can help you, a diabetes educator. And as well, there could be even some walking groups. So you can have a group of people going through similar things that can help you. These groups give you a feeling of community. It's important to have a feeling of community. Watching someone on your computer learning about your foot wound is not community. This is not enough. A lot of us, when we go through difficult times, like you may be now with your foot wound, you're not sure what to do, you need a sense of community. And it's good to seek out if there are any forums online, if there are any forums at your hospital, if there are different types of support groups. And if, if you don't have any that are around you, contact me and ask me and I'll help you find one. Or even start your own. Get a few friends that have diabetes and get together and participate in a support group that you can talk about your problems. Or if you want, I have one that I've provided. An online or a, 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 tele, a telephone conference call that we can talk about your needs. And I'll give you more information about that later, how you can talk about what your problem is and have a sense of community. Community is very, very important if you're having a foot wound to get it healed. There's also groups that can help you with weight loss because part of controlling the diabetes is weight loss. Weight loss is very, very important and is very challenging to do. As an aside, I have had two patients that I've been treating. They both have lost a lot of weight using bariatric or stomach surgery. And they use the surgery not only to lose the weight, but more importantly because of their diabetes. And you know what? Now that they've had that surgery, they've lost so much weight that they are, are no longer on any diabetes medication. They're still considered diabetic, but they're not on any diabetes medication. They have to be careful, and it's a very difficult process to get qualified for that type of a surgery, at least here in the United States. You have to lose a portion of your body weight, you have to be healthy, 
and you have to be a good candidate because once again, it's lifestyle modification. Because just like if you have plastic surgery and you remove everything and then you keep eating the same way, it's all going to come back. So you have to change those habits of eating properly. It's the same habits you have that are going to help you prevent getting a foot wound in the future are the same ones that are going to help you heal it at this time. So in this section, we've really discussed the importance of hemoglobin A1c, about proper blood sugar, about how you can lose weight, different types of support groups, nutrition. And at the end, I want to tell you, you just have to do what you know. To lose weight, for many people, it's a challenge. One of the key tips that help people are eating less and more often. So instead of having three big meals or two big meals, try to do five smaller meals. Not five big meals, but five smaller meals. Another tip is instead of using a big plate, use a smaller plate. Because psychologically, you can still fill up the plate and eat everything, and then you feel like you're being satisfied. Another tip that's very, very helpful is to stop eating while you're still hungry. Don't eat until you're stuffed. But stop eating while you're still hungry. And another tip, you can even leave a little food on your plate. Every time you eat, get used to leaving a little food on your plate. Many of us are all trained that we shouldn't leave anything on our plates. We should eat everything. But eating everything many times make you stuffed. And if you leave a little bit on your plate and just get in the habit of throwing it away, just throw a little bit away at a time. And it's okay. You're going to have a few less calories. And that over time is going to help you lose some weight as well. As well, drink water. Drinking water is very, very important because the more water you drink, a lot of times that can settle some of your hunger, make, make sure that you're very hydrated as well. And the last tip we talked about, I also wanted to talk about, is the importance of exercise, but being careful. If you start an exercise program, go slow, and especially look at your feet if you have poor feeling in your feet. Because a lot of patients, they start exercising and they create foot wounds. They create a, a blister, a blister that becomes a wound. And then they get frustrated. So when you're starting to work out, making sure that your shoes are the right size, making sure that there's no friction there, and really go slow with working out. And that can help you. So this is some help about how to control your diabetes and your blood sugar, and as well for your nutrition.